Well, certainly for recent times and maybe even recent modern history, the weather for the last seven days were, was pretty exceptional for the British Isles with widespread temperatures in excess of 27 Celsius from south coast to north coast a few days ago. That is pretty exceptional stuff. And uh, the peak temperature of the heat wave was 33.2 Celsius. Yesterday we got up to 32.5 at Cambridge. That marked day seven in a row of a temperature of 30 or above. Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well, staying safe. A big drop in temperature even in the southeast today compared to, of course, the past week or so. And uh, yeah, seven straight days, an unprecedented amount of days, consecutive days above 30 Celsius for the month of September, of course. And uh, yeah, the temperatures are fur coming down now. What a certainly, what a wild past 24 hours it's been across particularly England and uh, parts of Wales due to thunderstorms rattling northwards over the course of yesterday afternoon. Now, if we look at some of the information of the Met Office Twitter feed, you can see here um, some of the activity yesterday here, some of these really, really explosive thunderstorms running from the kind of almost due north. We had a frontal system across the northwest of the British Isles, but the widespread thunderstorm activity during the course of yesterday. And like I said, we had a peak temperature of 32.5 Celsius at Cambridge. We also had a wind gust within a thunderstorm of 77 miles an hour at Hull Beach in Lincolnshire yesterday as well. So pretty exceptional wind gusts that were produced by those uh, pretty strong, intense thunderstorms that were moving in a north to northeasterly direction. And these are the current temperatures um, as of uh, two minutes past four in the afternoon. So we've got a fairly fresh 12 to 16 Celsius across the Northwest Highlands. Uh, we've got the uh, temperatures of 18 at Aviemore down into the central belt. We've got knocking the door of 20 Celsius. And then, of course, the further south and east you go, we've got temperatures of around 25, possibly 26 Celsius in the southeast corner of the UK. And uh, if we look at the European view, of course, it has been very, very hot indeed across the continent. And we still have the heat maintaining itself uh, across say uh, France here so we've got temperatures into the 30s across the, uh, the Paris area into the upper teens upper uh, 20s sorry to the low uh, 30s across the Benelux region here and then into Germany we've got some pretty uh, hot conditions as well here and uh, you can see here off the UK Met uh, chart here the drop off in temperature now we could have two interesting things this upcoming work week or we're in the work week now of course um is we could be talking about the um, a local air frost believe it or not in the north highlands during uh, early wednesday morning that's all thanks to high pressure that the uh, builds overhead now if i can get to the right chart i can show you exactly what i'm talking about here and we also, later uh, on Wednesday, we could be talking about gale force winds in the northwest as well. So we could start the day on Wednesday with a frost and then end the day with gale force winds along the coast here. So we've got this kind of slightly slack uh, northwestly airflow at the moment. There's that cold front that is introducing the fresh air from the north, bringing a spell of fairly heavy and persistent rain across England and Wales um later on this afternoon and into this evening here and then heights are kind of starting to rise uh, across the northern half of the uk but a pretty wet start to tuesday morning it looks like for parts of england and wales along this frontal system and some of that uh, boundary could liven up a little bit uh, during the overnight tonight so bringing some um, heavier pulses of rain along that front but notice here that as we push through the course of tomorrow we've got this height rise here over the northern half of the UK. So clear skies, light winds, and relatively cooler. Let's have a look at the 850 temperatures here and see what it's showing here. And we've got actually fairly colder, in fact, across the North Highlands here in particular. So under clear skies, light winds, and relatively drier, the air temperature could drop uh, to actually down to freezing by the time we reach Tuesday morning here. So this is off the Met Office model here. And you can see here the temperatures drop into single figures tomorrow night and then uh, really drop off as we press into early Wednesday morning here. So this is late Tuesday into Wednesday morning 
look at the temperature starting to drop into low single figures here and it looks as if we've got maybe a three celsius in a few spots but I, I would be pretty confident that we're going to see even down close to freezing in a few spots for example the car bridge aviemore area and then up towards uh, the north highlands for example uh, it looks as if we have the best shot at a proper air frost for the first time uh, this season so far of course it's early autumn and this would be quite the, the shock to the system across northern britain considering even up here we had very very mild temperatures during the overnight period and then of course daytime temperatures in excess of 25 for two or three days during the course of last week here and even down across uh, southern portions of the uk we're going to have much fresher conditions. Yeah, we could still have 15, 16 Celsius down across London, um, you know, Essex, Kent, and the East Anglia. Still a fairly warm night here on Wednesday, but further north under the clear skies and fresher air, we could see a local frost setting in. Now, as we go back to the overview chart here, you can see what takes place here. You can see that we are going to see um, this system moving in from the, the west southwest direction here it deepens as it approaches the uk later on wednesday bringing a spell of increased wind from the southwest and heavy rainfall and it could be a notably autumnal end to wednesday beginning of uh, thursday across uh, particularly the northern and western areas and then we've got a kind of trailing uh, cold front that moves south here across and always as per usual with heights stronger further south and east the frontal system tends to weaken as it moves towards the southeast of the UK um, into the second half of Thursday here. But notice that depth of low. We've got 986 millibars as a central pressure, not that far to the north and west of the UK here. So we factor in the wind situation with this system and we could see some fairly strong wind gusts in excess of um you know gale or even severe gale and exposure here so we'll play through this loop here um of the ecmwf model here this is the peak wind gust model and you can see here that we could see wind gusts in excess of 100 kilometers per hour so 70 mile per hour winds quite possible especially in exposed coasts of the outer hebrides northwest um, highland region and, you know, anywhere in exposure, we could have 40, 50 mile an hour gusts even inland with this depth of low pressure. And it looks as if it kind of strengthens uh, during the course of Thursday. So a very windy day, late Wednesday and through much of Thursday, I think, because that center of low pressure never really dissipates. It never really moves through. It's kind of trapped and stuck to the north of the mainland here. So we could see some fairly gusty winds throughout the course of thursday according to the ecmwf run and then eventually it does move out of the way here looking at rainfall over the next several days and you can see here the general emphasis being on a kind of atlantic driven pattern here some fairly heavy rainfall associated with that system um you know into the northwest but in particular staying fairly dry across the southeast of the uk notice here kent kind of livens up a little bit we could see some um, thunderstorm activity here but notice here that we've got plenty of rainfall moving in um again the core of the rain across ireland northern ireland and the northern half of the uk less rain uh, away from that eastern side of england if you notice here up through france the paris area we've got some fairly heavy precip over the next few days here and then over the alpine region here northern italy uh, austria switzerland southeast of france as well even iberia we could see some fairly heavy rainfall over the next week or so here so you can see the general emphasis being on the uk and uh, you know we've got a, a, a much more active pattern generally speaking and that can essentially be attributed to the situation that we've got in the tropics at the moment here but one thing i want to point out to you is these warm waters with a negative NEO pattern we need to watch out for potential wind events as we push towards the second half of September here. The, the, the tropics are alive and kicking at the moment. And what we are seeing is we've got Hurricane Lee that it looks as if it's going to take a northward uh, trajectory up to the east of Cape Cod and this, uh, the, the New England area, possibly having some kind of um, you know side effects of um, Lee passing 
to the east, moving up towards the Canadian Maritime region here. So Nova Scotia, possibly Newfoundland will have a direct impact. But we've also got a situation here where we've got the wake, the cool um, wake of Franklin moving northwards. That's uh, upwelled some of these waters here. So it will, uh, Lee will move across the upwelled waters in, you know, uh, in the wake of, of Franklin. And that is going to essentially help weaken Lee. Now, as the system uh, tracks north, it weakens. What's going to happen is the wind field tends to expand as these systems start to weaken, they start to encounter more shear as it moves north. It also starts to lose its uh, tropical characteristics as well, becomes extra tropical. But what we need to pay attention to is that the wind field expands as the system starts to transition from hurricane, from warm core into a cold core with attached frontal systems as well. But what is important about all this, folks, is that we've got an increased jet stream. Um, you know, these tropical systems, whether it be Margo further east over the North Atlantic, moving north, we've already touched on that in the last couple of days, moving north, it may increase the chance of seeing some sort of a wind event uh, in the next week to 10 days uh, across the UK and Ireland. But it depends on the movement. It reshapes the strength and uh, reshapes and uh, affects the strength of the jet stream as these systems move north. Now, as you can see here, we've got Margo to the east, we've got Lee to the west here. Both systems are kind of essentially tracking northwards. And then as these systems then engage with the jet stream, it starts to reshape and also strengthen the strength of the jet. Now, you notice here, as we start to see Lee moving northwards here to the east of uh, the mid-atlantic region of the united states we're going to start to see the strength of the jet stream increase as it exits the northeastern half of the united states also an important thing with regards to lee and the track is does it engage with the the, the trough that's moving eastwards over the eastern united states if it moves quicker than that uh, trough it means that it's not going to affect really the eastern half of the united states and then it's going to affect more Nova Scotia and New England, uh, or, or sorry, Newfoundland. But if the, 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 the trough was to move quicker and catch Lee as it's moving north, it's essentially, the, it's got a greater chance of it pulling it slightly further west and having more of an impact in New England here. So that's quite important to consider. But you also notice here that Mar Margot, and Lee essentially in a similar latitude as they're moving north. You notice the jet stream becomes buckled. It's forcing heat northwards and it's then forcing the buckling of the jet. That in turn then deepens the trough over the northeast Atlantic and into the UK. We also see an increase in strength of jet stream winds. So if you notice here that we've got a pretty arced and pretty strong North Atlantic jet stream. Strongest being over North America, but we've also got a core of strong jet stream winds just in the southern flank of Greenland here. But in turn, then, it's forcing the deepening of the trough and development of this area of low pressure to the southwest of the UK here. And then as we play towards the end of the week, you notice that area of low pressure dives south, impacts uh, Iberia with the heavy rainfall, thunderstorms, and even cooler temperatures you see the effect that these tropical systems are having on the jet stream and the upper air pattern. So we are firmly in the trough. We're in slightly fresher conditions here as a result. This is during the second half of the upcoming weekend, of course. And then you notice here that we start to see the jet start to strengthen and head towards the UK. And that means that an unsettled and fairly, um, you know, windy scenario across the British Isles here. So the tropics are essentially driving the pattern as we move from mid to second half of September for the UK and Western Europe pattern here. And it looks as if high pressure is essentially going from the pattern for now here. So a very interesting situation developing, that's for sure. Uh, of course, if you haven't already done so, be sure to check out not one, but two global weather and climate reports from yesterday talking about the global picture of course that weekly roundup uh, so do indeed check that out i will hopefully if i've got time try to talk a little bit about winter tomorrow in the video so if you haven't already done so and you're interested in winter be sure to subscribe to the channel a lot of things to come in the coming days bye for now enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you tomorrow with more bye for now